I don't think one image can change the world. But I definitely think that you make little cracks in the foundation. I had always seen Africa in two ways when I looked at the newspapers and magazines. It was either war, famine, plague, or the other extreme where you could see the exotic safaris and wildlife. I didn't see that much in between. My sister was in the Peace Corps in West Africa, and that was really a critical thing for me to witness. I lived in a village with her and ended up living there for six months seen really how the majority of people on the planet live their day-to-day -day life. There's a great deal of joy. And I learn every time that people are adaptable. I'm not denying that all of the problems and conflicts exist on this planet, but you know, if you go to any of these places, there's so much more than that. This place is not as hopeless as you would think if you just picked up a newspaper and that's all you saw. Photography was a tool for me at first to explore and get to know other cultures. When I first started out, it really was about creating beautiful images. Who doesn't want that? And then I realized that you can go and take pretty pictures anywhere. But what does it mean? There has to be a meaning. I mean, I'm barging into people's lives, and I want something to come out of it. It's all about creating awareness and doing justice to the people and their story. If we only focus on the negative and give one small dominant narrative, what does that do to create understanding and drive change? Not a whole lot. There's so much more to people's lives. I think that stories of love and empathy are starting to see the light of day. People I've photographed have been changed by being a part of a story. For example, female circumcision in Guinea-Bissau. Finally, they just banned it. It's important to tell those stories. That is what creates dialogue. That is what moves the, the conversation to a different point than people just screaming at each other. Most people do want the same things. We are not as stratified and polarized as we like to think. For the last 13 years, I've worked in over 80 countries, covering issues primarily about women, poverty, health, security, This is kind of the most fun. People seem relatively happy despite all of this. I'm like used to it. I didn't realize it at the time, but all of these issues are really issues about, about nature. The logical place for me to go was Bangladesh. They are really on the front lines because of climate change. Every year, they get more violent weather, more frequently. I had never seen weather like this before. It was unbelievable. There's these things called chores, basically little islands. And these people living out on these chores are the most vulnerable. When the water comes, they're literally trapped. 
their lands are just disintegrating in front of their eyes. Within a day, 20 feet of this landscape just dropped into the river. And people were moving house and home overnight, just fleeing. Just picking up all their belongings and trying to find a new place to live. I saw people living on top of their houses because the flood waters had risen so high. I met Mamtaz in a little village along the coast of southern Bangladesh. She lives in this village where 80% of the women are widows. And the reason is all of the men in the village are fishermen and the weather is changing so quickly. They get out there into the ocean and they don't have the tools to see that a cyclone is coming because they're coming at incredible frequency like never in the history of, of their lifetime. And the entire village comes out to say goodbye to the fishermen every time they go out because they don't know if they're going to come back again. They live with so much fear. There's just no security there. And it's heartbreaking. Mom Taz, she also is a fighter. She's not just sitting idly by. Though she doesn't have an education, she is speaking in their parliament, trying to make change. I met so many people that were widowed. and also angry. A woman came up to me and started screaming at me, saying, why are you here? You're the one that's causing this. You're from those rich countries where everybody drives cars and has big houses. I know this is because of you. And that was really hard to hear and true. <laughs> so my immediate reaction is, put a mic on her, let's listen to her. None of these people have an education, but they know what's going on. They know why this is happening. The irony actually is the people there are the ones that are impacted the most, but actually contribute the least to climate change. The majority of people migrate, not because of conflict, but actually because of the climate changing. And they no longer have the resources they need to survive. They cannot live off the lands anymore, so they move to the city. Their capital is Dhaka. It's a city that was built for one million people. It has 12 million plus. Every year, about half a million people migrate to the city because of climate change for the most part.
There's a slum there that is just this maze of tin huts. Five to six million people live there. Humanity is right there in your face. There are families that live right up next to the train tracks. So there's nowhere for them to go. The water comes if they're lucky once a day. And they will line the bottles up and wait for hours and hours. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. I met people living on the pavement whose dream was to go and live in a slum. People don't want to migrate to Dhaka. This is totally alien to them, but they don't have a choice. They literally are coming when they're starving. I met so many families whose big dream was to go home. It's not even a debate whether climate is changing. Of course it is. In the West, we talk about climate change, but I don't think we really know what that means. In so many places I've been, it's not just a word. It's not just a conversation. It's real. It's really impacting people. If this continues, Bangladeshis actually may be in a better situation than many of us. Because they're preparing for it now. They're making changes on a daily basis. <laughs> Women are on the front lines. They're the ones that bear the brunt of all these changes. They have to stay at home when their husbands leave and take care of the family. Men get educated first and they get all of the opportunities. If you actually give women the tools and empower women, it doesn't just change that woman's life. She spreads it to the whole community. <laughs> Runa Khan is a force of nature. Her husband had a boat, and she basically took over the boat and created a floating hospital and started bringing health to the villages. And when you show up, there are hundreds and hundreds of people coming for general health care. These incredible people spend the majority of the year on the boat, going from place to place. She then created schools in these far-flung places in Bangladesh and made teaching girls a priority. She also created textile jobs for them. So they are making more money than some of the men in the village who have to go outside to find work. <laughs> Runa Khan is so inspiring. Lovely. Assalamu alaikum, lovely. I meet a few characters like this in my lifetime. She has already been operated once, but it's not going to, uh, but it, it did not work. So uh, it's, it's just a tumor. It's a tumor. So we are going to have our foreign doctors from Humanitera coming in November, and she will come back again, and they will check whether they can. She understands that women are the center of a village. 
And if you empower that one woman, she's gonna change the whole society. We generally don't focus on the women, but when you do give them those tools, man, they run with it. They change communities. It just, that ripple effect. These issues seem so complicated, don't they? But when you look at them, they're actually, I mean, there's very simple things that can be done that make huge impacts. That's why I love this work. I have seen changes. I'm seeing girls that were never allowed to have an education, getting an education and passing that down to their children. It's incredible to even witness it in my lifetime. And the thing I'm left with is, you don't have to have had the best education. You don't have to have a life of privilege to make a difference. All of us can do something. <laughs>